ფოტოგრაფია თერთმეტი წლის წინ დავიწყე. ჩემთვის როგორც ფოტოგრაფისთვის მნიშვნელოვანი პროცესია გარემოზე, ადამიანებზე და მოვლენებზე დაკვირვება. ერთის მხრივ ეს არის მცდელობა დაიჭირო აწმყო და მეორის მხრივ შეინარჩუნო წარსული როგორც მეხსიერება. კადრის უნიკალურობა მის განუმეორებლობაშია, მის აურაში, რომელსაც ყველა თავისებურად აღიქვამს. წინასწარ არასდროს იცი რომელი კადრით შეცვლი გარემოს. ეს არის დაუსრულებელი ძიების პროცესი. The friendship between TBC and Kolga Tbilisi photo counts two decades. We are delighted that despite current challenges, special format was found to celebrate 19th Kolga Tbilisi photo week, where people who tentatively wait every year for the contest can view the work presented by the participants. I am delighted that TBC Art Gallery will be one of the venues. I would like to wish best of luck to all participants. Hello, everybody. My name is Maxim Boyko, and I'm area director of Canon Central Eastern Europe. From one side, I'm very happy and pleased that such events as Kolga existing in Georgia and VSC Canon taking active part in uh, sponsorship of such events. From another side, for sure, I am a bit upset that we are not able to present all of our products and goods and opportunities that we can do with Canon due to current situation. But I strongly believe that next year we will see each other and we will be able to exchange and to get to know each other much better. I wish you all the best and a lot of health and we will see each other soon. Stay safe. Hello, I'm Ninuana and I'll be presenting Kolga Tbilisi Photo Week's 19th opening and award ceremony. Unfortunately, due to coronavirus pandemic, we're unable to physically host Kolga Tbilisi Photo Week and its award ceremony. However, we have decided to create first virtual Kolga Tbilisi Photo Week to show our support for photographers and to give an opportunity to our audience to freely attend the exhibitions. We hope that from 5th of May you will be able to enjoy Tbilisi hotspots and our exhibitions in a virtual dimension by visiting our webpage at kolga.g. Today I would like to present Kolga Tbilisi Photo Award Ceremony, which will be streamed on our social media and television with the support of Art Area. First of all, let me extend our gratitude to the administration of Expo Georgia for the opportunity to host this event in such a beautiful setting. Special thanks to our presenter TBC and permanent supporter Tbilisi City Hall, our sponsors Canon and Maiden Group, our partner company Alma, as well as museums and exhibition spaces, Georgian National Museum, National Archives of Georgia, the Art Palace of Georgia, Art Area Gallery, Zurab Zareteli Museum of Modern Art, Gallery Photographia, Gallery Untitled, Gallery Lichtblick, and the Folk Folklore Center of Georgia. Huge thanks to our media partners Arturia, Tavari Archi, Journal National Geographics of Georgia, Georgia Today, and Art.g. Per usual, there will be a number of international and national ex exhibitions organized within the scope of Kolga Tbilisi Photo Week. Detailed information is available on our web and the Facebook pages. 19th annual Kolga Tbilisi Photo International Contest successfully is underway, where photographers from 40 different countries are participating. Before I announce the winners, let me introduce our jury. Alan Griffiths, photography professor. Eva Reisinger, gallerist with a master's degree in art history. Tina Shellhorn, gallerist, curator. Regina Monfort, photo and visual book editor. Thomas Gerbers, journalist, editor-in-chief of Profi Photo Magazine. Now let's hear from Thomas Gerbers on behalf of the jury. Well, hello everybody. I'm Thomas of uh, Profi Photo Magazine in Germany. And this year it was my pleasure to assist the Kolga Tbilisi photo award as part of the jury team of the judging committee and that was really a pleasure thank you very much for asking me i felt very honored and uh, i must say that i'm a bit sad because right now uh, i would be in Tbilisi, first time in my life to visit the city the country of georgia 
And I was very much looking forward to it. But it's Corona time, so things are different. And I'm afraid things will stay different. So now I'm, um, I'm sending this video just to, to say how impressed I was. Impressed with all the great photo projects we have been able to judge. I was really surprised and especially the work from Eastern Europe was of a very high quality. In photography and conceptual both as well. So let me at this point congratulate all the winning photographers. Um, you did very well. I look forward to publish your work in our magazine and I hope that next year things will be back to the new normal and hopefully we can meet in Tbilisi or wherever we will have the chance to meet in our world. So good luck to you all and very, very best wishes. Thank you very much. Bye. Let's move on to announcing the winners. The list of the finalists has been on our webpage from April 5th, where you all had an opportunity to select your favorite photos and projects. Let's see if jury has favored your choices. We will open the ceremony by announcing the winner of mobile photo category. Nominees for the best mobile one shot are Daniel Hailing, Picturing Space Tourism. Dimpi Balotia, Flying Boys, Merav Maruti, Cadiz. And the winner in the category is Merav Maruti, Cadiz. Congratulations. The jury has considered Merav Maruti's mobile photo to be exquisitely composed and complete with its superb color palette. Dominique for the category One Short R, Are Gradai, an hour before the lockdown. David Klammer, Climate Action in Open Cast Mind. Monib Nassar, Dumas Children. And the winner is Arek Ratai, an hour before the lockdown. Congratulations to Arek. According to the jury, it is a stunning portrait of a man in Wuhan an hour before the lockdown. The moment suggests a powerful exchange between the subject and the photographer at the time of uncertainty. The rain pouring over the window serves as a shield, further isolating the subject. This photograph effectively speaks of our common vulnerabilities as human beings and of the looming global crisis. Nominees for conceptual photo project are Georgi Shengelia, Accidentally Portraits. Coincidences often Condition changes. My family's photo archive burned long ago. Only a small number of photos survived. Burned and destroyed small photos speed up the searching process. The small nostalgic photos inspired me to work on a new genre that would give me the same feeling as the photos that survived from the fire. I try to create this mood in my accidental portraits that I see every day. Mary Gelman, no shame. This photo project features stories of overweight people from Russia who experienced fat shaming in the past or still have to face it. Natalia Tikhomirova, in the arms of Boyd. Six months ago, I lost my child. All this time, from that very moment of loss and even now, I have been monitoring my inner self, fixing my feelings, trying to give them a name and accepting them. Every time I am in pain, it seems that I look at myself from outside. My project helps me to visualize, defeat and analyze my fears.
And the winner of the category is Georgi Shengelia, Accidentally Portraits. In the eyes of jury, Georgi Shengelia found inspiration from this project in his family's damaged photographs rescued from fire. This new iteration have both a residual and timeless quality to them. One might see them as reincarnation of the original photographs. They are beautifully somber and intriguing. Congratulations, Georgi. Now, let's move on to reportage category, where the nominees are. Alan Schroeder, Kit Jokis, Indonesia, Sombawa Island. Horse racing, once again between neighbors to celebrate a good harvest, was transformed into spectator sport by the Dutch in 20th century to entertain officials and nobility. The unique features of Sumbawa racing are the notoriously small horses and the fearless child jockeys aged 5 to 10 who ride bareback and barefoot and race with speeds up to 80 km per hour. Kiran Ridley, Hong Kong pro-democracy protest. Since 9th of June, Hong Kong has been plunged into political crisis with the waves of demonstrations and several violent clashes between police and protesters. What started as a protest against a proposed government extradition bill allowing citizens to be extradited to the China has since morphed into a wider call for democratic rights in the semi-autonomous city. Since the controversial extradition bill was withdrawn, protests have continued. Vitol Dobrovolsky Revolution of our time. The photo series of Vitol Dobrovolsky also covers the waves of demonstrations in Hong Kong. And the winner in this category is Kieran Ridley, Hong Kong pro-democracy protest. According to the jury, Kieran Ridley's coverage of a historic moment in Hong Kong takes us in 10 compelling frames to the heart of the protest and the violence, conveying the anger and frustration of the determined and resilient generation. Congratulations to the Kieran. In the category documentary series, the nominees are Kieran Ridley, Australian bushfires. 2019-2020 Australian bushfire season, dubbed as a black summer, began with the several uncontrolled fires in June 2019. This series is not only a vision of Australia facing the bushfires, but also environmental state of emergency in which the world is finding itself, global warming, extreme weather fronts and aggressive climate changes. Nikita Teryoshin, Nothing Personal, The Back Office of War. Nothing Personal shows the back office of war, which is the complete opposite of the battlefield. A oversized playground for adults with wine, finger food and shiny weapons. The bodies here are mannequins or pixels on screens of a huge number of simulators. I deliberately don't show you the face of the participants. It is not my intention to fix everything on a person. I just want to give an insight on this exclusive scene. Valery Melnikov, Grey Zone. First time I visited the Donbas region in early summer of 2014, right at the beginning of the military conflict. People of Donbas truly hoped the war would end quickly and peace would come back to their long-suffered land. People's lives are in constant danger because of the fighting, this protracted conflict and the foggy future turned entire Donbas region into the territory of the Grey Zone without any clear boundaries in space or in time. This is a vital state of existential loneliness of the person who has lost all hopes. And the winner in the nomination belongs to Nikita Teroshin. Nothing personal. The back office of war. Jury considered Nikita Teryoshin's project to be gripping, 
It takes us into a world of large-scale marketing of weapons, a reality rarely documented with such a visual eloquence. The photographs are minimalistic. The photographer is discerning, punctual, and precise. I respect that he chooses not to reveal the individual faces. Their body language, however, is infinitely telling. This combined with the clinical environment of defense tells a powerful story. It makes us reflect on the dichotomy or huge discontent between the individuals manufacturing, purchasing and moving these weapons with the ultimate tragic consequences. Congratulations to Nikita. This year we also present Kolga Newcomer Photo Award. It will be given to a young photographer under the age of 25. The idea of Kolga Newcomer Photo Award belongs to Teona Govicaishvili, a co-organizer of the photo week. This year's prize was established by the chairman of the German press union Deutsche Pressering Tilo Herde. In the category Newcomer, the nominees are Jan Jurczak, Life Goes On. The photographs in Life Goes On were taken in Donetsk Oblast, eastern Ukraine, in town situated mere kilometers away from the front lines. Jan Jurczak grew particularly attached to one resilient community of locals in Ardvievka, a suburb of the city of Donetsk, to which he paid frequent visits. It was Elena who rented entire floor of flats, making rooms available for homeless. This was the beginning of the support center later created and led by her. The war in Ukraine was being raging since 2014. One of the biggest problems is the lack of psychological support for the war-affected people. Monib Nassar, War Notes In the war, life has a different meaning. Everything about the normality will disappear. The daily routine is definitely abnormal, even if it seems normal for people who live there. Every day, bombs fell, people die and buildings are destroyed. The reality of the war cannot be denied. However, there are people who are significantly trying to resist the bitterness of this terrible war by their determination, hope and desire to live. This project illustrates the struggle of civilians to overcome the war in the biggest area of Syria. Tamara Eckhart, the children of Kero Brown. As Ireland's largest minority group, travelers are often ostracized from the Irish society for their nomadic way of life and pushed to the periphery of urban areas. On the outskirts of uh, Galloway, situated right next to the city dam, is the Carl Browns halting site, home to eight traveler families and their children. The project The Children of Carl Brown offers a glimpse into the environment and daily life of these children. This year's newcomer is Monib Nassar, War Notes. Monib Nassar reportage series captures the viewer in its profound characteristics to emphatically reflect but not to disturb. The one from the position of the symbiosis created by his person, not only photojournalist but also the person concerned, is the reason for the extraordinary attraction of his work. Congratulations to the Monib. With this nomination, we would like to conclude this year's award ceremony. We would like to thank all the photographers who have participated in the contest. Also, huge thanks to our supporters as well as sponsors who supported us right to the end. Don't forget, from tomorrow, 5th of May, you'll be able to visit virtual exhibitions on our webpage as well as the participating discussions. With this, I bid you farewell with the hope of better future.